and today's webinar is on connecting with other members. So, you know, as we've said in previous webinars, you know, there's really multiple levels of BNI Connect. There's the kind of the, the QuickBooks side of things or the chapter management side of things where we're tracking all of our statistics and things like that. And we have the tools and the reports and the data entry pieces for that. Uh, there's also a almost like a um, a WordPress side of things where we generate all these public websites uh, based on all of the information that's in BNI Connect and you have a chapter website as well. But there's also the, the ability to use it very similar to how LinkedIn is. And when you, if anybody's used LinkedIn or you know, Facebook for that matter, you know that you're part of kind of a, a walled garden or a network of people. So when you're in a program like LinkedIn, you can go in and find other people that are part of LinkedIn and get their contact information or communicate with them or uh, send them messages, things like that. And we can do that with BNI Connect as well. We have a network here of about 200,000 members around the world, and it is a private network just to BNI people. And you as a BNI member have access to that network. And believe me when I say that there are people in you know, professions all over the world, and you know, pretty much think of the profession and there's probably somebody filling that seat in a BNI chapter somewhere around the world. And the great part about you know, that I found about BNI, and one thing that you may or may not know is that I'm a BNI member, so I still attend my weekly meetings. My weekly meeting is tomorrow morning, Thursday morning at 7 a.m., um, but I also get to travel the world with BNI in order to teach people about BNI Connect and show them some of the benefits. And I'll tell you a quick story. Um, you know, when I, I went to Hong Kong last year, Hong Kong and Malaysia, to do some training, and when I was in Hong Kong, I wanted to you know, get a massage while I was there because massages are very inexpensive in Hong Kong. And the great thing is, is I didn't go to Google. I didn't go to, you know, Craigslist. I don't even know if they have a Craigslist or a Angie's List in Hong Kong. I went to BNI Connect and I looked up, you know, massage therapist in Hong Kong. Unfortunately, those people didn't have their profile filled out, so I wasn't able to actually get in touch with them. But the fact is that we can use the system, and if you have your profile filled out, people may be able to contact you for your resources. So before I get into going into connections, the important thing is to make sure that you have your profile filled out. I'm not going to go deep into this. We went into this in Monday's webinar, but if you haven't filled out your profile, take the time now to click on Update Profile, My BNI page, or click on Options my account and that will bring you into the back end section of your profile and to make a very long story short you'll see this broken down into a number of tabs along the top and what we're going to do is just go through and fill out all of the blanks so fill out all the, the things on the first tab make sure that you upload a photo and a logo on the second tab fill out all your contact information on the third tab fill out your bio and I just want to highlight basically two quick things. On your very first tab, the main profile, the keywords are exceptionally important. We are going to be talking about searching in just a second. And this is how people find you when they don't know your name. So make sure you have good keywords in there. Make sure that you're describing other aspects of your business besides just what the exact classification and in industry. Um, you know, again, when we're doing searches in BNI Connect, BNI Connect is a database. So we're doing a database search. It's a little bit different than doing a Google search. Google has billions of dollars that they spend on coming up with fancy algorithms and ways to guess at what it is that you're looking for, almost like they're reading your mind. Not quite the same level of search here in BNI Connect. It's more of a one-to-one -one search. So you know, make sure that if you want to be, if you're a bookkeeper, and you still want to be found for bookkeeping, but the category says bookkeeper, make sure you put the keyword in bookkeeping. That way people find you regardless of whether they search for the word bookkeeper or bookkeeping. The second thing you want to pay attention to is go over to the tab with the gear, the one that says account settings. Now here up at the top is member to member settings. So as we're going to be doing in a second, we're going to be searching through BNI Connect. When somebody finds you in BNI Connect, you want to make sure that they can contact you if they need to. For that, 
you can choose which of your different settings or different pieces of information you're going to share with people and when. So basically all the tabs in your profile, do you want to share your bio tab with everybody, just people you're connected to, or nobody? Now for those, each of those, you can make your own decision. I do highly recommend though that your contact details, basically your name and phone number and things like that, that you want to share those with everybody. Otherwise, they have to wait until you're connected with them before they will get your contact information. All right, so again, very quick about the profile. Let's go into you know, the, the actual social media part of it though. Now to get to that part of it, what we wanna do is here on the main screen, click on the second link down. It says My BNI Business, click on My Network. This is going to be kind of the dashboard, so to speak, for all of the different networking components. So see, you see we have six different sections here. We have connections. So connections are all of the people in BNI that you're connected to, similar to your first level connections in LinkedIn. Now, by default, you're going to have you know, probably 20, 30, 40 connections, and those are all of the people in your chapter. You're automatically connected to the people in your chapter, so you will have those people in your, it's kind of, the way I look at it, it's kind of like your, your little personal address book for BNI. But as you meet people in BNI or as you search for people in BNI, you can connect with them as well and it will put them into your personal address book. So it, it'll start out as just your chapter, but it will grow from there. I have about 538 people in my connections. Trust me, my chapter does not have 538 members in it. The next thing over from here is the groups. The groups are your way to talk to other people around the world in a group setting. So it's very much like you know, any of the you know, Yahoo groups out there or you know, the LinkedIn discussion groups. The difference is, is that this is private. This is a, the private groups only to BNI members. So a lot of times we're talking about BNI type things, you know, different aspects of the, the BNI meeting or groups in BNI tend to band together. So I remember one time when um, you know, florist had a referral for somebody in Ireland. You know, they were in California. They had a referral for somebody in Ireland. Said, "Hey, this works pretty well. This BNI thing. So why don't I create a group in BNI Connects for florists, so we could all talk to each other? And if we have referrals out of state, we can kind of create our own BNI, you know, florist network." And they did that, and it was very successful. But there's topics on all sorts of things. I think there's about 500 groups right now all together. The other thing about groups in BNI Connect is that if there's no activity in them for greater than 90 days, we will shut them down. You know, as opposed to some of the, the Yahoo, LinkedIn, Reddit groups out there that have been dormant for years in some cases. To the right, uh, the last tile on the top right is your documents. Those are regional documents. So uh, those are things that your regional office, so your executive director, regional admin, director consultants, uh, documents that they are sharing with all of the chapters in your region. So a lot of times it's things like you know, visitor sign-in sheets or traffic lights reports or um, other documents that they feel are valuable for you in your area. Going down to the bottom left, we have testimonials. So anybody you're connected with, once you've done some business with them or you just want to give them a shout out or a high five, you can give them a testimonial through BNI Connect as well. And you'll be able to review those testimonials here. The next thing over are events. Um, events are all of the training events that might be in your region. You can sign up for, let's say, a member success program by clicking on the events. And finally, we have an internal messaging system, and I repeat that, that is an internal messaging system between all of your contacts. So at first, again, that is gonna be with just your chapter, but as you add other contacts and other connections, this is a messaging system with all of your connections. Keep in mind that unless you've opted to have those emails forwarded, it, this is an internal messaging. So people won't get those messages until they log in to BNI Connect. All right, so let's take a look at connections. Uh, you, know, you probably want to connect with other people in BNI. Now, the way that we can you know, utilize the connections is from here from my network, we can add connections. You know, the other way we can get there is to click this magnifying glass up here in the upper right-hand corner. Both of those, both the add button and this magnifying glass will take you to the same place. 
And this essentially is the directory search. So this is the BNI global directory. All 200,000 members around the world are in this directory, as well as another uh, 10 to 20,000 additional people. We have director consultants and ambassadors and senior director consultants and area director consultants and executive directors and national directors and national admins and regional admins. Well over 200,000 people that you have access to through BNI Connect. So the easiest way to find somebody is just to search for them. So we have, a, uh, we have a David Elliott on the call with us today. So I'm going to do a search for David Elliott. And I believe there's two T's in that. So if I do a search by name, it's going to come back and it's going to give me two results. We have uh, a David Elliott in Iowa and a David Elliott in uh, Devon, which is, I think, in the UK. So once I find somebody here, I can click on their name. And this will bring up their profile. And here we have a picture. I can see the, the chapter and the other roles that he's holding. I have his contact information, his email address. So if I wanted to get in touch with David, I could do that. I can also go through his other information, like his bio. I can look at his testimonials. If he was sharing any pictures or participating in any groups, I could see those as well. And once I'm done, I can close out of that. But you don't have to just search by a name. You can search by other things as well. So, for example, I told you when I was in Hong Kong, I did a search for massage in Hong Kong. Doo, 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 and it came back with a number of people. So when I was there, I went in, I clicked on, let's say, Poppy. It opens up a profile. Now, when I did this in Hong Kong, by the way, there was no information in here at all. So that's why I couldn't get in touch with them. And we can also see here that Poppy isn't, I'm not connected with Poppy yet. I can add her to my connections. I can send her a connection request. It is an opt-in. But because she's not sharing her phone number, I couldn't give her a call right now, which is why I recommend at least sharing your contact information with everybody. But again, I could go through and see the various aspects of her profile, or add her to my connections. So, again, you can search by name, you can search by category. There is also an advanced search up here at the top. So, if we wanted to just make sure that we um, narrow things down by country or by industry or company name or even a state. So for example, um, let's see, I have uh, John, John Sanchez on the line with us as well. I know there's quite a few John Sanchez's in BNI. So let's make sure that we're searching by first name and last name. And I know this John Sanchez is in the United States, so I only want to pull up John's from the United States, not from Mexico or uh, South America or anything like that. And let's go ahead and do search members. So here's John, and I believe this is the John that is on the line with us today. I see your question there, John. Is this, uh, is this you in Orange County here? Excellent. So if I wanted to add John to my connections, I could go ahead and click Add John to my connections. And this would send him an email saying, hey, Jeremy Walsh wants to connect with you. Now, John, I know you said you, um, you've been working with this in the past, but um, not really haven't gotten a lot of responses. Tell you what, why don't you do me a favor, John, and anybody else that's on the line with us today, go ahead and connect with me. So go ahead and go to the search. And you can go to the basic search and just do a search for me, Jeremy Walsh. And if we're not already connected, go ahead and click the plus sign next to my name or click my name and click on the add me to the connections. So here's what happened. I do have a connection request here from John. I've received a connection request from John Sanchez to accept it. Click this link and I do need to opt in. Now in order to get these requests, by the way, you do have to have the 
notifications enabled on your profile. So if I go in, click on update my profile, let's just make sure that my notifications are enabled, which if I don't have that enabled, I will not get the notification via email. So if I go to the settings tab and go down to the bottom, I can choose whether or not I want certain notifications sent to my email address. So here is an option, forward my connection requests to my email address, yes or no. Now you don't have to have an email in here. I want these to go to my personal address as opposed to my support address that's part of my profile. So I put an override address in there and I do have my connections being forwarded. So if members don't have that, they won't get the email alert. However, they can still receive their connections. Once you start putting out connection requests, the way that you have to go in and then accept the connection request, and we do that, I can either go back to the home screen here on the My Network tab and go to Manage. Now, because there's always a couple of ways to get there, you can also click on Network Connections. So whether I go to Network Connections or I go to Manage, it's going to bring me either way to the same place. So this is my, this is really, this is my connections interface. It's my kind of personal BNI address book for all of the people that I now have a first level connection with in BNI. And I can scroll through, I can click on any of them, and when I click on their name, it brings me up their contact card. And I can see you know, phone number and email and things that they're sharing with me. I can also send them a message. Again, this sends an internal message to them. Let me go back there for a second. So this, this sends an internal message to them that can be accessed by the email icon up here in the upper right hand side. Other things that I can do, let's click on Amber here. Amber's sharing a little bit more information. I can also ask Amber for a testimonial. I can give Amber a testimonial. So this is where you give testimonials. You give testimonials to people that you're connected with. I can go and view her full profile, or I can remove her from my connections. Please keep in mind that you can only remove people that are not members of your chapter from your connections. People that are members of your chapter, they are kind of permanent connections, so to speak, or they're, they're managed directly by BNI Connect. Um, so once they leave the chapter, they will be automatically removed from your connections. And when new members join your chapter, you'll be automatically connected with them. So for example, Brad Asher here, he is a member of my chapter. So I have him in my connections. I can always look up his information here, but I have no ability to remove Brad from my connections. Now, when people start making connection requests, they're going to go into your received requests. And John, this is where um, other, other members, if they do not have the email forwarding turned on, this is where they have to go manually in order to accept their connection requests. And here are all the people that I think most of these just came in because I saw my email notifications uh, come through here. And when you have connection requests, you can go through and let's say you can click on read message if you want to go in and read their, their message that they sent you. This one's just, I'd like to add you to my connections. This regards Lonnie. I can then choose whether to accept, ignore, or reject that particular request. And now I have the rest of these to deal with. Now I can go through, let's say that uh, John Sanchez here, I'm not really sure who he is, or, or Kayla, I'm not sure who Kayla is. If, I'm, if I want to find out more information about the person, I just click on their name or click on their picture, and that will open up a new window. So you notice it's a new tab here. And I can you know, read more information about them, where they're from. I can see uh, Kayla's from Indiana Central here. She's part of the YMCA. Looks like a good person to connect to. So I can go ahead and accept that one as well. Or if you'd like just to accept all of them at once, if you have a bunch in there, click Select All, and then Connect to Selected.
And because there's a bunch of these here, in just a second, this should refresh. And we should see my, um, my connections jump up from 539 to, if my math is correct, 551. And there we go. Now I have my 551 connections. Now, if you've been sending connections, you can also go to your sent requests and remind people that you've sent them a request and wanted to connect with them. It means that they haven't done anything with that request. So, John, that's where you would go as well if you want to see people that you've requested a connection from. If they have not yet acted on it, you can always remind them through here. If they, um, But again, if they don't have their email notification turned on, they won't get that message either. So... Now, as far as testimonials go, you can give one testimonial per connection. So we are limited to one testimonial per connection, so they don't get watered down. But to give a testimonial, very straightforward. You click on your particular person that you're going to give the testimonial to and click on Give Curtis a Testimonial. Just type out your testimonial and click Submit. Now, I'm not going to do that to Curtis here. But giving a testimonial is as easy as that. Do make sure that um, it's a good testimonial. Uh, if Again, you can only give one testimonial per person. If you need to replace that one, that person is going to have to delete it from their testimonials so that you can put a new one there. Now, you can review to your testimonials by clicking this testimonials button right up here. Or if you're back on the home page, click manage under testimonials. Or under Network, go to Testimonials. All three links will take you to the same place. And the Testimonials interface looks almost identical to the Connections interface. And here we have all the testimonials that you've received. So you can go in and review any of these testimonials. If you would like to hide it from your profile, now keep in mind the testimonials only show on the internal profiles. They do not show on the public websites. Way too much liability for that. But they do appear on the inside profiles. If I want to hide it, though, I can hide that one from my profile. Or if they say they want to replace it or I don't like it or what have you, I can just delete it from my profile. I can also review the testimonials that I've given to other people. I can expand this folder out, and again, review any of those. All right, and that's the testimonials. Let me go back to the home page here and on the My Network tab. All right, the last thing I just want to review, we have a, just a couple of minutes left before we hit the bottom of the hour here, and that is the groups functionality. And again, the groups functionality really is your way to have conversations with people around the world. And to get into the groups, we just click, go to groups and click on manage. And once we get into the groups, we will see our list of groups in here. Now, as I mentioned, there are a total of 540 groups. Now, you may see a slightly different number because some of the groups are hidden, um, but there are 540 groups out there. It's by default sorted by the most recent activity, and you can see there are some very active groups. Uh, here's one, business opportunities. Anyone seeking opportunity or has an opportunity to let others know? There are 474 topics and 776 posts with 1,000 people in that group. So that is a very active group. Uh, Cross-selling in India, hospitality services, BNI Global Property Power Team, BNI Photographers, and you can just basically scroll through these if you want to. Uh, one of the most popular groups out there is the From the Founder group. It has nearly 4,000 members in it, and it's a very active group as well. That is your opportunity to actually speak, so to speak, uh, directly with Dr. Meisner. He does personally manage this group. I do know that for a fact. There's even an introduce yourself section where you can go in and basically put a quick post on there and says, hey, you know, my name is, and introduce yourself to 4,000 BNI members around the world because everybody will get a notification of that message. 
If you, once you join the group, you can go ahead and participate in that. So I can see here that Ivan posted a video the other day about what's BNI ever done for us. By the way, that's a great video. You should uh, go ahead and give that a quick view. If I wanted to post a message on that and say, yep, that, that was a great video, I could submit that and make a comment on that message. Now, the other thing you can do, you can search across the groups as well. And just go back one more time here. And we're back in the group. So you can search the groups as well. So let's say I wanted to just search for Dr. Meisner's groups. I could go by Creator Meisner and click Search. And I would have the three groups by Dr. Meisner and the one group by uh, his wonderful wife, Beth Meisner, as well. If I wanted to join the group, I could click Join Group, and then I would start receiving notifications and, in many cases, now be able to participate in that group. Now, you can also create your own group. Every member can create up to seven of their own groups. I do not recommend making seven groups. That is a lot of groups to try to manage, especially because they have to remain active. But click Add Group, and you just choose a group name, what type of access, and then you can invite your connections to participate in that group as well. And the next thing to do is just to start talking and having those conversations. All right, we are at the bottom of the hour, so uh, I do want to make sure that if anybody does need to leave right away, uh, thank you guys so much for being here today and for being part of this webinar. I hope you learned something new about BNI Connect. Just a reminder, this uh, is being recorded, so you can share that video with anybody you'd like to, invite people to, to review it, other people in your chapter, let them know how the system works. A good referral for me is to please join us for our future webinars as well. Uh, please bring a visitor or a guest to, next, to the next webinar. Our very next webinar is actually this Friday on how to manage your chapter website. So that's a special one for chapter webmasters. And then, again, the next one after that is going to be um, on Monday, July 25th at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And that's going to be member tools and reports. We're going to go deep into some of these different areas to look at some of the other things that BNI Connect can do for you. All right, so what I'd like to do is open this up for questions. Please, please send in your uh, questions, and I will be happy to answer those questions now. Uh, John says, w are we notified of denied connection requests? And I believe that you are. I I'm like 90% certain that you are. It's not something I come across very often, to be honest with you, but I'm fairly certain that you are notified of uh, denied connection requests. So if you don't want the person to know, the best thing to do is to ignore it, which also prevents them from sending another connection request your way. So I know early on in BNI Connect, we had a couple of uh, members out there that were attempting to make a connection with every single member in the world which really isn't what it was designed for, but they were also getting very um, aggressive about it. That has since stopped. Um, but if you didn't want to connect with somebody and also didn't want them to send a second connection request, you could always choose ignore. All right. What other questions do we have? And again, it's great to see uh, some familiar names on this third webinar in our series. So thank you guys for all of you that have come back for a second and third time. I greatly appreciate you being here. So the default settings for the member-to-member -member settings. Um, I'll tell you what. Let me uh, pull up a uh, default person, and I will let you know what that is. Give me one second here. Um, I'm going to pull up somebody from my uh, Antarctica region. That wouldn't have changed any other settings, or for that matter, has never logged into BNI Connect. 
So we have, uh, here's the default settings, is that the bio tab is just for your connections, your connections are just for your connections, testimonials are shown to everybody, picture gallery is shown to everybody, email is shown to your connections, and contacts are shown to your connections. Nothing is forwarded from a notification standpoint uh, by default. So, you know, again, I, I like to share, and it's just to other BNI members, so I tend to set everything to all. And I also like to be notified in my email about those connection requests and things like that. So um, to go back to your earlier question, John, uh, John Sanchez, uh, more than likely they have their connection request set to no, so they're not getting the email letting them know that they have it. We also find that people think that this email is just going to automatically go to other people's regular email, but this, again, this is an internal messaging system. But if they have their BNI Connect messages forwarded to their email address, then they'll get notified of those. But that happens a lot with leadership teams. They think they're emailing the chapter, but really they're just doing an internal message to their connections. All right, does that answer your question, Nancy? As well as John, does that answer you all your questions as well, John? Awesome. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, Hori uh, says, I just joined BNI. I have a question regarding filling application. Uh, should I put my business email or my personal email on the application form? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you, that's completely up to you, and it's going to be largely dependent on what type of business you have. Um, my primary recommendation is your business email. Uh, however, my, I guess my, I don't want to say warning against that, but there are certain corporations that do heavy email filtering, um, especially a lot of financial institutions and maybe big insurance agencies or banking companies where you may just simply not get a lot of messages from BNI or from other BNI people because they're, they're filtering them out of your email automatically. So again, it's completely up to you. Um, most people use their business address, but if you think that's going to be an issue with spam and not getting messages, then I would say use your personal email. Does that help, Hori? Uh, Jay says, uh, great presentation, excellent week, very informative. So thank you so much, Jay, and I appreciate you being here. I recognize your name from the last couple of days as well, so thank you so much. And again, good referral for me is to please, if you, if you found today's webinar helpful, uh, if you could please do two things. Refer this webinar and the series to other people in your chapter. The other thing would be when you get the, the, uh, the email to say, hey, what did you think of the webinar? Uh, just respond with your comments. That actually gets forwarded to uh, you know, Graham Weimeller, the CEO, and uh, other people in BNI, and or let your executive director know that you saw these webinars so that they continue to promote them in your region to other members, especially people that are just joining BNI. And, help them get started quicker. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns, compliments? If not, I will see most of you, uh, or hopefully a lot of you, for the member tools and reports and the visitors when I return in a week. In the meantime, happy connecting. <laughs>